This is the M4 Sherman, the tank that won World War II. Not because it was the most powerful, not because it had the thickest armor, and certainly not because it had the biggest gun. In fact, if you read most historical accounts, you'd think the Sherman was a death trap on tracks. A poorly armed, thinly armored coffin that American and British tank crews were forced to drive into battle against superior German machines. But here's what those accounts don't tell you. The Sherman had three specific qualities that made it better than any other tank in the war. Qualities so effective that this supposedly inferior machine remained in frontline service for over six decades while its German rivals became museum pieces within years of the war's end. By the time you finish this video, you'll understand why the Sherman wasn't just good. It was exactly what the Allies needed to win. Let's start by destroying the biggest myth about the Sherman. Everyone compares it to the Tiger and the Panther, those legendary German heavy tanks with their fearsome 88mm guns and thick sloped armor. And yes, in a one-on-one -on -one duel at a thousand yards, the Tiger would win every time. But here's the problem with that comparison. It's completely meaningless. Comparing a Sherman to a Tiger is like comparing a Toyota Hilux to a Lamborghini and declaring the Hilux a failure because it can't hit 200 miles per hour. You're measuring the wrong things. The Sherman was never designed to be a heavy tank. It was designed as a medium tank with a specific role, infantry support, breakthrough operations, and combined arms warfare. The vehicle it should be compared to is the German Panzer IV, which had almost identical specifications, similar armor thickness, comparable speed, and a gun of similar caliber. When you make that comparison, the playing field levels dramatically changes. But even that comparison misses the point, because the Sherman had three revolutionary features that transformed it from a decent tank into a war-winning weapon. The first thing that made the Sherman better than any other tank was its unmatched reliability and ease of maintenance. This sounds boring compared to talking about guns and armor, but on an actual battlefield, reliability is everything. A tank that can't move is just an expensive pillbox. A tank that breaks down 50 miles behind enemy lines is worse than useless. It's a liability. The Germans learned this the hard way. Their Tigers and Panthers were engineering marvels, precision machines with interlocking road wheels, overlapping armor plates, and engines that required constant maintenance. In the cold Russian winter, those beautiful interlocking road wheels would freeze solid with mud and ice. Panthers broke down so frequently that German units calculated they'd lose half their tanks to mechanical failure before they even engaged the enemy. The Tiger's Maybach engine was so temperamental that it needed a complete overhaul every few hundred kilometers. Now look at the Sherman. It used five different engine types across its variants, but they all shared one characteristic. They were simple, proven designs borrowed from existing vehicles. The radial aircraft engine, the General Motors diesel, the Ford the 5th 8, these weren't exotic power plants, they were workhorses. When something broke, you didn't need a specialized engineer from the factory. Any mechanic could fix it with standard tools and readily available parts. Better yet, the Sherman's front hull was designed as a single removable unit containing the transmission, differential, and final drives. If something major broke, you didn't spend three days disassembling the tank piece by piece. You unbolted the entire assembly, lifted it off, dropped in a replacement, and had the tank back in action within hours. This modularity extended across the entire Sherman family. The M10 and M36 tank destroyers, the M7 Priest self-propelled gun, they all used Sherman components. This meant that spare parts were everywhere, maintenance was straightforward, and tanks stayed in the fight. While German tank divisions were waiting for specialized parts to arrive from distant factories, Sherman units were cannibalizing damaged tanks and getting their vehicles back into combat the same day. The second revolutionary feature of the Sherman was its unprecedented production scalability and upgradability. President Roosevelt didn't ask for the best tank in the world. He asked for 45,000 tanks per year. That's not a typo. 45,000. To achieve this, American designers made a radical decision. Ease of production would trump battlefield survivability. The Sherman was deliberately designed to be simple enough that automobile factories could produce it. Ten different manufacturing plants built Shermans, using five major variants and countless subvariants, but wherever possible, the same mechanical and electrical components were used across all of them. This wasn't just about building lots of tanks, it was about building a system. When battlefield experience revealed problems, 
solutions could be implemented across the entire fleet. Early Shermans had a terrible reputation for bursting into flames when penetrated, with casualty rates as high as 80% for crew members in knocked-out tanks. Analysis revealed the problem. Ammunition stored in sponsons along the hull sides would ignite when the armor was penetrated. The solution was wet stowage, armored boxes set into the floor and turret, with the void between shells filled with water, antifreeze, and rust inhibitor. When the armor was penetrated, this fluid would flood the ammunition compartment and suppress the fire before it could spread. This single upgrade dropped the fire rate from 80% down to 10 to 15%. Imagine trying to implement that modification across the entire German tank fleet with their dozens of different models and hundreds of unique components. It would have been impossible. But because the Sherman was standardized and modular, this life-saving upgrade was rolled out across thousands of tanks in months. The same happened with armor improvements, suspension upgrades, and gun changes. The Sherman wasn't a static design. It was a platform that evolved throughout the war, getting better with each iteration while maintaining compatibility with existing logistics and training. The third and most important feature that made the Sherman superior was its revolutionary fire control system and rate of fire. This is where the Sherman didn't just match its opponents. It crushed them. Let's talk numbers. A Sherman could traverse its turret 360 degrees in 17 seconds. A Panzer IV took 26 seconds. A Tiger or Panther took nearly a full minute. In tank warfare, the first shot is usually the winning shot, and the Sherman could get its gun on target three to four times faster than German heavy tanks. But it gets better. The Sherman was equipped with a gyroscopic stabilizer in the vertical plane. This was a complicated system so complicated that many American crews initially disabled it because they didn't understand it. But crews who learned to use it properly had an enormous advantage. When a tank moves across rough ground, the gun barrel bounces up and down wildly. A Tiger commander trying to fire on the move had to guess where his gun was pointing and hope for the best. A Sherman commander knew exactly where his gun was aimed because the gyroscope compensated for the vehicle's movement. This meant Sherman crews could fire accurately while moving, while German tanks had to stop, settle, aim, and then shoot. In a fast-moving battlefield engagement, those extra seconds were the difference between killing the enemy and being killed. Now add in rate of fire. A Sherman could fire 15 to 20 rounds per minute. A Tiger could manage 4 to 6. Panther maybe 8. This means a single Sherman could put 3 to 4 times as much firepower downrange as a German heavy tank. You might think this doesn't matter if your shells can't penetrate the enemy's frontal armor, but you'd be wrong. In actual combat, tanks don't sit stationary facing each other at parade ground angles. They're moving, maneuvering, exposing their sides and rear. And even if you can't penetrate the frontal armor, a sustained barrage has devastating effects. Crewmen duck inside the turret, losing situational awareness. Periscopes shatter. Hatches jam. Tracks break. External equipment gets blown off. After taking 8 or 10 hits in rapid succession, even an undamaged Tiger crew would often bail out, abandoning a technically functional tank because the psychological pressure was unbearable. This is the Sherman's secret weapon, not individual superiority, but systemic overwhelming firepower delivered by reliable, numerous platforms that could maintain a sustained rate of fire that German tanks simply couldn't match. So here's the truth about the M4 Sherman. It wasn't the best tank in any single category, but it was the best tank for winning the war. It was reliable enough to drive from Normandy to Berlin without breaking down. It was simple enough to be produced by the tens of thousands and maintained by ordinary mechanics in field conditions. It was upgradable enough to evolve throughout the war, fixing its flaws and adapting to new threats. And it had fire control and rate of fire that gave well trained crews a decisive advantage even against heavier opponents. The ultimate proof? After the war, the French army captured German Panthers and also received American Sherman Lend Lease tanks. The Panthers, though supposedly superior machines, were retired within a few years. Too unreliable, too complicated, too expensive to maintain. The Shermans served into the 1950s. They fought in the Arab-Israeli Wars, the Indo-Pakistani Wars, and the last Sherman didn't retire from frontline service until 2003 with the Chilean Army. Sixty years of service. That's not the record of an inferior tank. That's the record of a war winner.